Jose Andres, who's already well known to food-loving television audiences, is also becoming increasingly known for his work to help in the wake of natural disasters like Florence. In fact, just this last week, the celebrity chef has been on the ground in the Carolinas. In a new book, Andres details his experiences in Puerto Rico and elsewhere. He spoke to Jeffrey Brown about what he learned and the challenges of disaster relief. He was an unlikely first responder after Hurricane Maria tore through Puerto Rico a year ago. Chef Jose Andres prefers the term food first responder. And if you wonder what a chef can bring to a natural disaster, he says this. Our profession is, is a profession that uh, is chaos, and we try to survive in chaos. And we try to organize. Chaos is your normal life, and we try to organize the yeah. chaos, and that's the difference between successful restaurants and a non-successful restaurant because it's kind of chaos. In a moment like this, it's very much like a crazy restaurant, only at a larger scale. Chef Jose Andres. For years, Andres grew his brand as a celebrity chef. High-end dining, cookbooks, TV shows, Michelin stars. A native of northern Spain, he became a U.S. citizen in 2013. And then we need to go back to the Sotiles. His Washington, D.C.-based company is called Think Food Group, where we watched him working on ideas and recipes for some of his 30-plus restaurants around the world. But in recent years, escalating after the devastating 2010 earthquake in Haiti, Andres has wanted to do more to use his knowledge of and passion for food to help create a new kind of activism. His World Central Kitchen is a nonprofit humanitarian organization that not only responds to disasters, but looks for solutions to hunger and poverty. Chefs like me, we love to feed the few. You love to of, feed the few? But more and more, we are very in love of feeding the many. I cannot have my fancy restaurant doing well in this corner. And then in another part of the city, people doing poorly. So just four days after Maria hit Puerto Rico, Andres was on the ground, and his team was cooking within hours. He enlisted the help of local restaurants, grocers, and bakers, mobilizing a network of kitchens on the island that ultimately fed hundreds of thousands, making nearly four million meals. Helping biggest people. Their efforts were chronicled on social media with the hashtag Chefs for Puerto Rico. We did it. We opened more than 26 kitchens. My crazy idea was not crazy. My crazy idea was doable. I think we did a very good work in a very difficult situation. So I guess we got the right to write a book and share what we learned with everybody. That book is called We Fed an Island, published on the imprint of his friend, the late Anthony Bourdain. The initial challenge, Andres recalls, was convincing officials he was equipped to tackle the problem. In my brain, it's almost like I knew how to feed one or two million Puerto Ricans. And I was trying to communicate that. And obviously, when you're a chef and you go to talk to, imagine, a government official and you tell him, Listen, I want to, I can help you feed two million people right. tomorrow. Yeah. Just give me the resources. Just believe in us. How could they not sort of see who's this crazy guy kind of coming in think, thinking, I know, how to, I know how to feed a whole island? It's not the first time you show up in one of those. Yeah. When they see that you have more than 30 restaurants where I feed thousands of people a day, right. when you are manning an organization that has more than... 2,000 employees, you know, you have some skills. He worked with FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, but describes his frustration with what he saw as endless bureaucratic red tape. The truth is that the men and women, are, the volunteers, are all amazing. So, so you need to be careful in the criticisms, especially on TV, because sounds very harsh and seems nobody did anything. It's far away yeah. from the truth. Yeah. But yes, it's true that the system and the organizational chart sometimes yeah. are not created in a way that gives an opportunity to people to be successful. Mm -hmm. 
Andres has been a frequent critic of President Trump for what he considers an inadequate response to the crisis. Just in recent weeks, the official death toll for Maria was revised to almost 3,000, a figure President Trump then sharply disputed. Andres believes the president has consistently underplayed the true scope of the devastation. To watch him throw paper towels to a hungry and thirsty crowd, while I'm sure he then meant bad, the image, the perception was one of almost like saying, hey, here I am to give you some, mm. some paper towels so you can take care of your own. The problem was big, the problem was huge. Together, I'm His group has now been mm -hmm. active in other so disasters. So this is like a battle map almost, it's a battle right? Map. Of, uh, and then I can show this to everybody and everybody understands. Mm -hmm. and, and I break, and so those are the shelters. Those are the kitchens. So you know you in recent months, World yes. Central Kitchen has been on the ground and feeding people <laughs> after volcanoes in Guatemala and Hawaii, an earthquake in Indonesia, and the wildfires in California. A lot of people to feed. I think more this week, Andres and his team are in North Carolina, helping residents after Hurricane Florence. They've prepared and delivered upwards of 80,000 meals from relief kitchens in Wilmington and Raleigh. At the very end of this book, you write, we need to build a new model of disaster relief and food aid. When disaster strikes, uh, people need to be eating today, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. We only need to make sure that organizations like ours, that we will be there making sure that things are getting better, quicker and faster rather than later. That's the least we can do for people. All this based on a simple idea. Nothing nurtures people better than a plate of hot food. A plate of food was bringing hope, was bringing a message of saying, we care, and we're going to fight for you to make sure that tomorrow things will be better. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Washington, D.C.